Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. We've got an interesting story today, one that sort of happened, I guess about a year ago, where one of my favorite Star Wars games, Empire of War, recently got another patch. So if you watched that video, I'm not gonna tell you to skip this one, but you probably know the basic details. In short though, Empire at War just got a new patch. My good friend, Corey Loses, who's been modding the game forever, he's a total nerd, did a really good video breakdown of what's changed in the new update so I'll link to that down in the description but in short the patch notes say that both Empire War and its expansion have been converted from 32-bit to 64-bit applications which should help issues with memory bugs and crashes that multiplayer desync issues have been addressed if you've played Empire War skirmish mode you're probably familiar with this and that there have been numerous gameplay fixes addressing balance and incorrect unit behavior some of these are extremely nuanced so again I'll leave that to Corey but I know what a lot of you are asking why is this important? Why is a 17 year old game still receiving patches? Why does Petroglyph apparently still have an individual or a team working on it? Well, I'll explain. Empire War is a strategy game at first released in 2006. I was initially going to have a Manscaped ad on this video and the tie-in would have been that back then they did something quite ballsy by fully opening the game up to modders. The game would only get one full content edition, but that ballsy decision back in the day would pay off as Empire at War has actually remained extremely highly placed within the Star Wars community because of the efforts of modders over the past 15 years. Now, I know some of you hate when I take out the Steam charts, but as of the time I'm recording this, Empire at War had 2,000 players online. That is a lot for a single player game, which Empire at War primarily is. That's about twice of what Jedi Survivor has online right now, not Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor. Obviously, it's a different comparison because Empire Empire War has far more replayability, but my point generally is that the game's population not only remains healthy, but if you look at the numbers, has actually been increasing since the early 20 teens. And you've got to recognize the benefits for Petroglyph here. There's a reason why they're dedicated resources to making modders happy, which is essentially what these patch notes do. Again, refer to Corey's video. It opens up the possibilities for new modding, and that's important because not only do mods keep current players engaged, Aged, but surprise, surprise, the 2,000 players who are logging in right now aren't the same 2,000 who were logging in 15 years ago. Empire at War is obviously getting consistent sales. The game is extremely popular, so much so that some of you may be familiar with my second channel, X2. For a while, we dedicated that to only Empire at War content, and it made enough money due to the vast interest that I could have supported myself there full time if I chose to. And it wouldn't be like that without modding. The base of Empire at War, it's a good good game, it's fun, but it's very limited. I mean, it's set just in the Galactic Civil War, its expansion adds some, but still, you're playing relatively limited scenarios with a limited scope with a limited amount of units. The various mods which have been released for Empire War over the past 15 years have opened that all up to a degree that's almost unimaginable. My favorite mod, I've talked about it before on the channel, it is Thrawn's Revenge by the Empire War Expanded Team. That mod, which has been in development for over a decade and receives active updates basically makes Empire War a complete different entity. It's almost an encapsulation of the post Endor period of Star Wars Legends. If you choose to, you could start as the New Republic or the Empire or a smaller faction like the Corporate Sector Authority and play through an era progressive campaign which sees you build the New Republic after the fall of the Empire, face off against the Thrawn campaign or the reborn Palpatine, eventually deal with the U. Jean Vong in a future update, all of that in one playthrough, which is just so far different from what the base game looked like that it's a pretty much a complete new game. And so many people buy Empire at War, or more specifically, the Empire at War Gold Edition, just to play mods like this. And it's smart too, because modding allows you to capture just so many more fans than you could get on your own. This is especially true of Star Wars. As I mentioned, the game was initially set in the Galactic Civil War era. You have mods like Thrawn's Revenge, which really pull in Legends fans like me who grew up with the novels set in the post-Endor era, but you've also got Clone Wars mods, you've got canon mods, and Star Wars canon wasn't even a glimmer in Disney's eye back then. You have mods coming out set in the Old Republic, you have mods that completely change the gameplay, like for example, Awakening of the Rebellion. If I want to play a more scrappy game as the Rebel Alliance, well, I've got AOTR. All of this, Petroglyph is getting 
it for free by not only opening their game up to modders, but actively working with the community to make these new updates. A community which will continue to provide content and sell the game for the next decade, or probably more, let's be honest. In an era where most video games, especially multiplayer games, are trying to get as much money out of their audience as they can with live service game modes and paid expansions, I think more companies need to look towards what games like Empire at War are doing, what City Skylines did with City Skylines 1, what my favorite game SimCity 4 did back in the day, and let the community make what works, not just because you're getting free content, but because as a game's life cycle progresses, you're getting so much testing time with the game. Fans are figuring out the pain points and they're working ways around them. Now, the original Empire at War, the modding is still limited based on the somewhat antiquated nature of the original game, based on my understanding anyway. I just hope whenever we get a new strategy game, whenever we get a new big single player Star Wars strategy game, that they remember the lesson of Empire at War. And it's not just Star Wars games. Sins of a Solar Empire, for example, I know for a fact that game sold largely because of the Star Wars mods. If you can make a game with spaceships and make it moddable, Star Wars fans are going to buy it because we're not getting the games we want right now. And that's also true to Empire War. I'm never going to get a game where I can captain the Lusankia and face off against MC90s and Endurance Flash fleet carriers and E-Wings. Marmar, when you're editing this, you don't need to find that exact footage, by the way. But fans will want that and they can make it. All in all, just really impressed with Petroglyph Games. I hope we continue to get stability upgrades and improvements for Empire War. I mean, the ultimate dream is that we get Empire War 2. Petroglyph wants to make it. They say they're waiting for the call from Lucasfilm Games. I don't think they'll get the chance, but I hope. My thing is, if the game's multiplayer is now stable enough for online play, I'll throw a cash tournament like I did with Star Wars Squadrons. I'm not going to promise $20,000. It all depends on sponsors, but we've got to test it. Maybe I'll work with some modders and create a custom mod that will have all the tournament stuff. That's sort of my idea. If that's interesting to you, let me know your thoughts down below. Until then, though, guys, see you next time. Bye-bye.